All right, so let's keep it real. This past Saturday, we saw Boots and Bozy Ennis take on Karen Chukadzan for their rematch, you know, for the IBF title of Welterweight 147, you know what I'm talking about? And to be honest, he didn't look that good, but he still won in convincing fashion, right? So <laughs> people still, like I said, are that they're, they're paying extra attention to the former, not looking too good as opposed to the latter as it still went in a convincing fashion. And that's okay, you know, critiques are all are, should be welcomed and it should always be expected, right? But it should be, to a certain extent you know because so now all of a sudden because he didn't look as good as we anticipated now Bozy in his whole training tenure his whole training career is being put under the spotlight come into question does that sound familiar sounds like ben davison and anthony joshua after he rolled the dice against daniel duball right but was that the first time that he was rolling the dice or just the first time that you paid attention Whoa take him deadly serious and uh, credit to him as well he's coming to roll the dice he wants to win so as you can see you know he was talking about rolling the dice back when robert helenius and him were about to fight in reference to them taking the risk and and, and the, getting the big reward at the end of it you know so they've been rolling the dice for a while you know so now i have a question for you is it really a philosophy issue is it really a change of trainers that's needed or is it just that you're now paying attention there's nothing wrong with cr critiquing somebody but once again I think that there should be a cap on it. And I think we should know the difference between constructive criticism, being hypercritical, hypocritical, like some of y'all are, and just straight up talking out your side of your neck. We about to talk about it though. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. If I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, Box and Talk family? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. I'm praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out. You know, as we talked about in the intro, you know, Bozy Ennis and Boots Ennis had a pretty rough outing this past weekend against Kerry Chukadzian for their IBF mandatory re uh, rematch, you know, for the 147-pound belt. However, I do want to slow down a little bit, man. I think people are doing a bit much when it comes to talking about Bozy Ennis, you know. Now, criticism is always applicable should always be accepted and expected you know but i do think that you need to put a cap on it because all of a sudden now you know people are saying oh not that boots didn't win not that boots got ko'd not that boots robbed karen it was just that boots won but he didn't win how we expected right and that's that's okay because you know we should expect a great performance from a guy that a lot of a lot of people think would beat Bud, who's a pound for pound number one. Like I said, if you have Bud Crawford number one, uh, uh, Inouye number two, or Usyk number three, it doesn't matter. They're all interchangeable. As long as you got one of those guys in the top three, it's cool. So if you're expected to be on the pound for pound list and and dethrone a guy at the on the pound for pound list, then mediocre performances are going to be critiqued. You know, a little bit harsh, harsher than than normal. However, I still want to emphasize that Boots handled business and he won in convincing fashion. But like I said, you know. You should be open to criticism and the criticism is well deserved. However, there is a difference between constructive criticism, being hypercritical, hypocritical, and, you know, just talking trash and running your mouth. You know, I think a lot of people are running their mouth because I think it's unjustified to question whether or not Bozy Ennis is a good trainer all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? I think that's that's a bit of a reach. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. So once again, I'm not saying that you can't critique things, but we also have to give credit where credit is due as well. You know, case in point, Jerome Boots Ennis is 33-0, and 0, right? Undefeated fighter. 29 of those 33 wins coming by way of knockout. You know, so Bozy has led him to a lot of success. And a lot of people think that he's the best by a wide margin at the 147-pound division at welterweight. You know what I'm saying? But when you mess up, yeah, we should question some things. But I don't recall people questioning somebody's training ability after a win. So let's talk about some other fathers and son situations that have trainers and sons that have won and also lost man so let's, let's start off with Lomachenko right great fighter all-time great you know what I'm saying he's gonna be up there in the rafters you feel me but Lomachenko did lose to Devin Haney after he got beat I don't remember people saying replace Papachenko like this you know after he got bullied by Orlando Salido do you remember anybody asked for Papachenko to be removed oh and after he got clapped up by Teofimo <laughs> I don't really remember anybody questioning Papachenko's credibility as a trainer. And speaking of Teofimo, we got Teofimo Sr. You dumbass. You know, that goofball, you know, 
when he got beat by George Cambosis. Now, I will be honest. A lot of people question Teofimo Lopez the senior's uh, ability to train, and rightfully so, because he says dumb things like his son doesn't need a jab. And then he says that, oh, his son is so great, but he can't even cut off the ring against Jermaine Ortiz. So he looks dumb and he looks incompetent. Bozy Ennis is not applicable to that. But yet still, I hear a lot more people calling for Bozy Ennis to be removed than Teofimo Lopez Sr. You know, oh, let's talk about Inouye. You know, you know Naya Inouye. Well, we not talk about the monster, but we are talking about the dad, Shingu Inouye, and, and Takuma Inouye, you know. So Shingo Inouye, his younger his younger son, Takuma Inouye, he lost to Nordino Bali. I didn't hear anybody saying that he should be removed as a trainer. He's an he's a incapable trainer. And by the way, uh, Seiya Susumi just beat Takuma Inoue as well. Yeah, that derailed the potential unification fight between Juto Nakatani and Takuma Inoue because his son is no longer a champion. I haven't heard anybody say that he's he's an incapable fighter. You know, granted, he does have his son, his other, his oldest son, Nai Inoue, who's doing his thing. No question, you know. I don't think he should be removed, but I'm saying I don't think Bozy should be either. And of course, Bozy's not as accomplished as now, yeah. But the point is, stick with me. Takuma Inoue has failed a couple times too, and we're cool with that. I'm I'm cool with that because I think sometimes you have shortcomings and that's okay, you know what I'm saying? So let's get to the next one, the most recent one, Anthony Joshua. Oh man, we just seen AJ, you know, get called into question him and his trainer, right? It sounds very familiar to what Bozy Ennis and Boots are going through right now. But AJ lost by knockout. <laughs> Boots didn't, you know. But I'm gonna I want to I want to show you this. A lot of people were calling for some people were calling for Ben Davis's uh, removal. Uh, some person like a, a, a former fighter and Carl Frotch, or should I say Carl Crotch, like Antonio Tarver would say. <laughs> you know, there were three famous words <laughs> that changed Ben Davis's uh, traded career and Anthony Joshua's situation. It was, you know what it was. Roll the dice. Well, similarly, Bozianis says, go get him. And that's it, you know? So people are saying, oh, well, you, you could have given him more instruction. Well, you know, I want to be very clear on this when I, when I talk about Carl Frotch and the other people that are extremely critical. You know, what if Anthony Joshua's been living by that creed? And that's, that's something that him and uh, uh, Ben Davidson have been saying for a while, you know? It's so funny how harsh how harsh Carl Crotch is on um on anthony joshua when him in all his spectacular wisdom right he was still a big enough idiot to pick anthony joshua to, to beat dubois then and you know why he picked anthony joshua to beat daniel dubois because of the body of work that him that anthony joshua and ben davidson laid down you know while still rolling the dice then then and wins so my point is this when you're a freaking hypocrite it stands out it outshines you you know and, and your reputation precedes you in case of point with carl crotch He's over here saying, oh, man, Daniel Dubois, that was a terrible training situation. Well, why did you pick Why did you pick AJ to beat Daniel Dubois? You know, I, I could tell you why, because I remember. It was because of Anthony Joshua's ability and the, the hot streak that he was on, all with Ben Davidson. And <laughs> it was mostly in part to Ben Davidson being his trainer. Now, all of a sudden, Ben Davidson is, a, is, a, is an incompetent trainer. You see the, hypocr the hypocrisy there? It's ridiculous, man. So what I'm saying with Bozy, the correlation I'm making now, people are, will, will question you when you look shaky. You only had to lose because Bozy and Boots, they, they won. You know, I just think that Karen Trukadzian was a good fighter. He's a formidable fighter. He also had a game plan. And he uh, uh, benefited from seeing Boots again. It wasn't just a one-way thing. Could they have looked better? Yeah, of course they could have looked better. But Karen did his thing as well as a formidable fighter. And we have to give that credit because Boots still won. He just didn't win by knockout or or, or, or win by a wash like people were expecting. You know, to, for him to do his little dance or slow-mo on him. And that's okay, though. You had one job. Just the one. So the, the biggest point that I'm making is that I don't know how long he's been saying go get him or, or roll the dice or whatever little cliche that they say, you know, in the corners is just that now it stands out because the, the, the performance wasn't as good as we thought. We have to be able to uh, acknowledge and identify the differences because like I showed you, Anthony Joshua been saying roll the dice before he was even with Ben Davidson and he probably said it when he beat Francis Ngannou as well and he probably said it when he beat Jermaine Franklin. So we continue to say it and he just happened to lose against Daniel Dubois. In fact, when he said roll the dice, he actually hurt Daniel Dubois and almost knocked him out, but he got knocked out instead. So if it was, if just just went a slightly different way, we could be talking about a whole other thing or we wouldn't be, even be talking about rolling the, rolling the dice at all. Yeah. Now, I know when you look at this situation, Boots is Bozy's main guy, but he's still undefeated, you know, but you would expect for him to have so much wisdom, especially when he talks and articulates, you know, his approach to the game, to, to the boxing game and, and gives out some game plans for other fighters. You would think that he would be a little bit more elaborate when giving instructions for his fighter. But like I said, 
but what if he feels like that's what they've been saying and they already put the work in and his son knows what to do you know so i just want to be very careful with that because i know people say oh well you know his other fighter eddie cruz just struggled yeah but he did struggle a little bit against antonio moran but he also won by stoppage of antonio moran as well so you know i i want people to realize that you can't the same people that you had faith in and confidence in and the reason why you think that boots is going to be dominant is a large part in the same person who's it who's whose body of work you're questioning now off of one performance in bozy and so i think that's kind of wild man because this is just indicative of the fact that you can't trust anybody man these are why friendships uh, uh fail this is why relationships end and you know <laughs> and other things don't work with people because there's no loyalty man people are so fickle one second they're with you a hundred percent next second if you say something that they don't agree with or have a slight opinion then they're killing you and saying that you need to you know get fired or removed from your job or your position and question your whole body of work which i think is very ridiculous like i said man nobody's perfect you know not your parents not the person you're sleeping with you know <laughs> Or your favorite fighter's trainer nobody's perfect man so just just give people opportunity to prove themselves that he's been proving himself so i do think like i said i will i know people aren't going to hear me um you can criticize but i do think that people when you when you do criticize them it should be a threshold i don't think that bozy ennis needs to be removed from training i don't think he's a capable trainer i still think he's a good trainer now if you want to question how good boots will look against a higher competition if you want to question how dominant he really is that's that's fair you know but when you say that he him and any of these other father trainers or just trainers period should be removed because of one bad performance like what about the other fighters who actually lost you're not questioning their removal, you know? So sometimes you can lose, sometimes you can make a mistake. That doesn't mean that everything else, your whole body of work, your whole past, and your reputation goes down the drain because of one performance where you didn't look as good as we thought, but you still won in dominating fashion because that's exactly what it was. Go look at the scorecards. He dominated that fight. He even dropped Karen, you know? But shout out to Karen for being a good fighter and, and adapted as well to put on a good show. But Bozianis, there's no way that you could convince me off of this last performance alone that Bozianis is, is, is incapable of being a good trainer, man. Shame on you, man. But don't forget to like the video. Let me know if you agree with that or not, man. It's okay. You come at me in the comments, you know? So if you don't agree, if you do agree, are people tripping? Am I being too lenient? Are people being too hard? I think people are being a little bit too hard, but they do deserve some criticism but to say that he, he's incapable of training people to bring him to the next level i just think you're stupid and i think that you just you just talk too much you're ridiculous you probably don't have your shit together in your life you know what i'm saying so chill out but yeah man don't forget to like the video but most importantly remember with god we can do anything without god we're nothing the doctor's out peace from the hood to college both worlds they had to meet six degrees between us so cold we're about to freeze but we're florida boys hot takes we bring the heat we're moving the culture the engineers to the streets